Hamilton is coming to Greensboro's Tanger Center April 6th through the 24th. And we are so lucky to have none other than President George Washington himself, Paul Oakley Stovall with us. Hello, good to see you. Hi, how are you? Thanks for having me, Rosemary. It is so I'm rare I'm rarely up this early, you know, singers we sleep in, but this well, is this is for a good cause. We're for a good cause. We are just so excited to have you here as part of the inaugural Broadway season in our brand new performing arts center. You spent a pretty penny on this tank Tanger Center, is it That's called? Correct. Tanger? Tanger Center. Yeah, so uh, and I think I don't think Hamilton's been to Greensboro. No, never. No. So we our company, our like company will be the first one to come through. Great, great, great. Paul, how did you get started acting? I think I I followed the well-trodden path of the hyper kid who did everything in school and then acting stuck. You know, I was in student government and sports and the math club, literally the math club, the key club, the National Honor Society, everything. And I think that uh, I was fortunate to have, you know, we, we've heard the story from Tom Hanks. We've heard the story from other actors who say it was my instructor who saw something in me and it stuck. And I said, I can give this a try. I will give this a try. And then I just kept going and going and going. So, so what, what it's not an original about? story, but it's it's one that doesn't grow old. Oh, no, it does not. What was your first role? I was uh, Jack in the Box and... <laughs> <laughs> But listen, I would have given the more like I played Chino in West Side Story in eighth grade a more, you know, I auditioned and got the part in school. But the Jack in the Box sticks with me because I was in the box in the dark and I knew when it was time to pop out. And I noticed that there was a hole, a rip in my costume that my mom's best friend had made for me. And it was in the back. It was, you know, oh, uh -huh. the, rip, the rip was in the back. Uh -huh. And in that moment in the dark, I was thinking, how do I improv and get out of this? And even at five years old, the adrenaline of trying to figure out what to do in a difficult moment, I think that stuck with me for years and years and years. And it's with me today. How to how to rely on your, all you have is yourself. Mm -hmm. And how do you get out of the situation and let the audience see one thing, although you know there's disaster happening, you know, behind you. <laughs> But they don't know any differently. But know? they don't know any but different. When I learned that, then, you know, that sort of mirage of theater uh, really got a hold of me. And how did you get to Broadway? <sighs> Luck. I mean, you know, I had left the business. I, I, I was probably on the precipice of landing in some show. I was, I had moved to New York and was auditioning and understudying and doing little indie films with the downtown scene. And then the uh, Obama campaign came along and a lot of people were talking a lot on Facebook about this is what has to happen. And this is what needs to happen. And you know, those social media arguments that are not, we're seeing some happen yeah. nowadays on Twitter with stuff going on. And I said, you know, enough talk. If I really am serious about it, then, and if this is that important, then I need to make it that important in my life. So I just dropped everything, went to volunteer. It turned into a longer stint than I anticipated. And seven years later, I was still an advanced associate for the Obama administration, um, transitioned over to the Bernie Sanders campaign, which landed me in Greensboro for a trip. So I have been to Greensboro. I love it. It was brief. I was at the La Quinta Hotel, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Um, found a real cool college bar, got the, got a real sense of what the vibe of the town was, and it was really nice. So I look forward to being back in Greensboro. You are so right. We have that college vibe. We have that, you know, big city amenities, small town feel right here. All but to, to answer your question then, the, I fell back into theater because the political journey had kind of ended for me. and. I am a playwright and I was getting into my writing in theater and I was just in New York and I was at, a, at an opening night party and some casting people saw me, remembered me from years ago and said, what, hey, what are you, are you? And I auditioned for this Hamilton thing, which I didn't know much about. This, so I didn't- This Hamilton thing. <laughs> to me, it was like, it, it, had it had become the thing that it is, but yeah. I just had been so out of the loop that I thought that seemed so far away. 
I'll never be in something like that. I'm just gonna try to ease back into some regional theater and some, you know, I'll never, I'll never be in that. God had other plans, I guess. Okay, so you went on tour playing George Washington after working in the Obama administration. Did you pull any inspiration from that job? Mm -hmm. What, what did, how did that prepare you, you think? Again, I thought, well, there was maybe not some divine plan in order, but you take what you have in life to use and what I could use, it, especially in this very unique casting that Lynn and the team has done, I did have the experience of watching what the Obamas went through, how their inner circle, I wasn't in the, I was nowhere near the inner circle, but how the inner circle's tight, then there's the next level, then there's the next level. And from the periphery, I could see the dignity with which they dealt with gossiping over here, mm -hmm. chit-chatting over here, they had a focus. And so that's just one of the many things that pop up now and then when I'm working on this role, because I continue to work on it, is that, you know, there were a lot of people whispering, George Washington doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know, he, he's a farmer. Like, he doesn't know what he's, like, why, why do we pick him? Because he's popular? Yeah, well, but he's not, he doesn't. You have, and he had to have a singular focus to kind of get this ship, this country, get it up. And then he did the smart thing and said, all right, now you guys do it. I'm out. And so I use a lot of, of that and, and, and keeping his personal life pretty personal. As much as we think we know about him, you know, the tour went to Richmond, Virginia, and I was able to go to this wonderful museum that had some of his diaries. And some of the entries are like, Saturday morning, go for a horseback ride with the kids. Tuesday, go for a walk. You know, he just was a chill dude. <laughs> you know? Amongst all the insanity happening around him, he found that time to, where his whole day would be just went for a walk with Martha and the kids, sat on the porch, that's it. And I think I think these big epic people, we forget, sometimes they just spent Saturday sitting on the porch. And so that helps me too, to remember, he was a human being. He had to eat food in order to stay alive. You know, he had to do all the things that we have to do. He just had some big, big, big things in front of him that he dealt with. So can you bring some of you into the character? I mean, how do you really relate to your character? You know, you never know what circumstance you're gonna find yourself in. As I've just told you my trajectory, I never would have thought it would be what it is. And so you handle the situation when it comes to you. When I got this role, I hadn't been singing for, on this level, for eight to 10 years. And so what do you do? You think, well, I have to do this eight times a week, get in voice lessons quick, get into the gym, Get yourself ready. Do, just do what you can to prepare because things don't get thrown at you that you can't handle. Mm. Haven't we learned that over the past two years? What is it like coming back to the stage after all this time for the cast and the crew? Well, it's been twofold. You know, it's thrilling, of course, and we're so very grateful and living in a sense of grace that we have work. We have something to do. At the same time, it's, it's, difficult to be touring because you you want to work of course but you're away from your loved ones you're away from that security place your best friends your your home base and so you're out on the road but the plus of that is we're seeing how america is dealing with this we we see it the good the good and the bad and the ugly we see how vast our country is you know i spent a lot of time in ireland over the break and Ireland's as big as Indiana. So I could go through the whole country of Ireland in a day and a half. Mm -hmm. And the US has different, like you and I were talking about, we, we speak differently. We yeah. have, you know, we do, there's just so much to take in. And no matter what your reaction to it is, it's uh, it's very fortifying. And it's, um, it's an experience that I wouldn't trade for the world that I feel very lucky to, have this experience of being in Tempe and then Milwaukee and then Omaha and then Little Rock and then Houston. You don't, you know what I mean? Right. So we're really looking forward to getting to the Carolinas because that's a whole other rich historical place. And that's the other thing of doing Hamilton. The East Coast has a lot more, you know, these people yeah. were there. Yeah. So, so yeah, we tend so. to get a lot of uh, 
the rich storytelling when we're on the East Coast. I wonder, do you know Greensboro's connection to the uh, the Revolutionary War? I I, hey, I only know. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm get kidding. it wrong. I'm just gonna say I'm just gonna say my guess. I know that John Lawrence was from the Carolinas, so I know this is wrong, but I'm assuming that maybe it has something to do with John Lawrence and So actually the Battle of Guilford Courthouse was here in Greensboro and that was the battle that where we lost the battle but won the war. General Nathaniel Green lost to Cornwallis here, but then oh. he went on to Yorktown and that's when that his 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 troops were so injured that they could not face another battle. Like oh, that. so actually you guys like took their knees out so that right. so yeah you you bat you beat them up a little bit. Exactly, they were okay, wounded. I did, I did not know that. Uh, yeah, you know, of course, of course, I think of Cornwallis all the time in the scene Yorktown when he says, uh, "I saw George Washington smile." I'm imagining that that's sort of the moment that Cornwallis and I are mm -hmm. sort of agreeing that we won and I'm saying, see ya buddy. <laughs> but I never thought of where Cornwallis was coming from into the Yorktown battle. So there you go. A little you go. To come with. Yeah, so when you can do a little, you can do a little sightseeing on your own when you're here. Well, we oh. will have seen this show either in person or in pieces and maybe even on Disney Plus. What are some things you recommend we look for when we see you live on stage in Greensboro? I would say to look for the familiarity in it. And what I mean by that is, and I hope this will sort of soothe people who say, oh, hip hop, uh, it's turntables, uh, historical figures, Hercules Mulligan, who, who's that? You know, for people who are like coming in like that, two things, just know that we've been rhyming forever. We're taught as children to rhyme in order to make sense of things, and we rhyme as a game. Shakespeare hasn't lasted as long as he's lasted without people understanding that rhyming in verse is a very cool way to communicate. So we've been doing it for hundreds, thousands of years. So the rapping, don't let it intimidate you. Come in like on the edge of your seat and lean forward. Number two, I would say, what you're going to see is a very traditionally Western story at its core. And what I mean by that is you have the hero and the anti-hero. You have the love interest. You have the father figure like Obi-Wan Kenobi in Star Wars. You have the three best buddies like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz with, you know, the, we have the Sons of Liberty. They have the lion, uh, the lion, the scarecrow and the tin man. So there will be very familiar things where you say, I have a hold of this. Right. I'm calm and now I can get into the minutia and, and live in the story. So that, the, it, you know, it, it's not so wild as people think, you know, you will have a base of operations, so to speak. You know, one thing I think about when I see the show is that people are not just good or just bad or, or it just one thing at all. You know, there are lots of things. People are always lots of things all the time. Yeah, it's so funny you say that. I'm sure we're out of time, but I did an interview earlier where someone said, the, the interviewer didn't say it, but they were relaying to someone else said, oh, I loved Hamilton. And after the first few minutes, I didn't see color. And he wanted my response to that. And I said, well, I wasn't there, so I don't know the context in which that was said, but I would just encourage people to see the characters and see the color. Mm -hmm and embrace what that is and all of its complications because like you said, people are complicated. Yeah. We're more than one thing. So to lean into this idea that I don't want anyone to ever forget that is a black man out there playing George Washington. And what does that mean? Yes, I'm watching George Washington and I'm watching the story, but I'm also looking at that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to after 10 minutes say, I didn't even see his color. Right. You know, I want us all to continue to say, and so what does it mean for someone of color to play Thomas Jefferson, who was a slave owner? Mm -hmm. who, who How am I people? reacting? And that's a person that, yeah. you know what I mean? I don't want you to not see it. I want you to see it and, and think a lot about it. And I think that's what Lynn wants us to think about it and talk about it afterwards. Yeah, I think this show really does challenge your beliefs. And, and there's a lot to that, a lot 
of what this is really all about. Hey, yeah. thanks for spending some time with us. Just have loved chatting with you and can't wait to see you on stage in Greensboro. I'll be fangirling, so I'll just, I'll, I'll be right there. Screaming. I'll go, there's, there's Rosemary. <laughs> <laughs> Hamilton on stage at the Tanger Center, April 6th through the 24th. Tickets are still available at tangercenter.com. Also, that lottery is going on, the $10 ticket lottery. So make sure you enter that to get some last minute ticket deals. Again, April 6th through the 24th at tangercenter.com.